Jack Rabbit here. I thought we could go over a little bit about um, through hole soldering and put together the um, 68040 um, breakout board as an example. At least some of it. And then I thought I'd use an extra board that I have to um, demonstrate some fixing some typical mistakes that I might actually do during the soldering process. So let's get into it. Anyway, first we need to uh, cut some of these pins to size. It's always good to have some extra light. Of course, it would be good if one actually plugged it in first. <laughs> Anyway, that's fixed. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing out every single pin. This has 192 um, pins on it. This processor, but of course not all the all the pins are um, are signal pins. So we don't. There's lots of ground connections and plus voltage connections. For the other side, we also need three. So, there we go. So that's for those parts, and then we need to some slightly longer ones. And the way I did this is each row of pins here comes out in exactly the same order. But if you think about it, since this, it needs to be also, um, when it's on a circuit board, it needs to be mirrored. So that's the little trick that makes it a little bit more complicated to actually do. So what I do is I, th I think I demonstrate um, just often when you're doing uh, soldering, well not often, but sometimes when you're doing soldering you get um, solder bridges. So that means you get more solder on the board than you actually intended to have. I think I will demonstrate one of those mishaps. So we're going to put a, a little set of pins here. Oh, 
three cut pins away, so I don't want to floor it. Should usually be the case. So, move it out of the way. Let's see if I can get this on. Um, Experiment will be the best. So it's um, also good to have something in, in addition to an extra light with possibly like I have an embedded magnifying glass. It's also good to have something to hold things with. So I use this kind of vice, but there are also um, very many different types of grip mechanisms for, for circuit boards. Typical thing is the one actually burns oneself when I was trying to put in tin headers because one tries to hold them on the other side. Hmm. I wonder what would be best for this. something on top of there to actually hold it up. And um, when you're soldering, you should look at what you're going to solder. So if it's um, a little bit more bulky, like a, this pin header, and there's quite a big pad to fill in, then um, the, what the setup I have is I have my two um, uh, soldering stations set up, and one has a, a tip, which is a bit bigger than what I have on the other one. So the other one's got like a smaller tip. And this means that I can change between them depending on what um, what I'm um, soldering. Plus the thing is that I also have two different sizes of solder. So if it's really small parts and and stuff, then I use the small tip and this very thin solder. And otherwise I use this thicker solder. So this time I go for the thicker solder. So let's try and um, solder it up and then make some mistakes. And the way you do it is you heat up both the pin and the pad, and then you apply this holder. mistake. Now I've created a solder bridge. What am I going to do? So you have basically you have two alternatives. I'll demonstrate both so you can actually use this kind of solder removal wick. So the idea behind this is um, you put it on top of the area where you want the, want the solder to disappear and then you heat it up. solder gets um, embedded in the wick. And then you have to cut this off each time you basically used it. And um, let's see if we can create another mistake. Like, oh crap, now I created another mistake. How do I get up away with that? Because basically reheating it just and trying to push it around with the tip, you you won't get anywhere. Now what we can use is we can use this suction tool. So, prime it. I have the light in my in the way. And then you heat up the solder. And then you take it away. So now you've got the solder inside here. 
And then you might need to touch up the um, soldering. Because usually you remove too much and if you want the it'll still have the connection, it's good to just to put a little bit of extra solder back on and get in the right place. Oh, that's how you handle the um, mistakes. So let's see how many mistakes I make. Well, start on the real board. So now I applied the, or we'll put the socket into um, the vise. And each soldering job is unique in terms of how you should hold it. But I think I can, can I cut this. Uh, yep. So now it's in place. And now I'm going to probably switch to a smaller solder. And see how this will work. side. Oh. oh, that's the first two pins out of 100 and, what did I say? 192. From time to time, it's good to clean the um, soldering head. So oh, that's how you do um, through hole soldering. So I have um, lots to do, as you see. I will post it on Instagram when I'm actually done with all, all the soldering. So anyway, I hope you like that. Um, got some info information how through hole soldering is done. And, um, if you like the videos, consider clicking the like button, consider subscribing. Um, merch is available, or if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, that's possible. Links are in the um, description. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, anyway, here I thought I'd give some little bit of a bonus clip close-up. So this is the, the um, last of the... Um, pin connectors to go on.
heat up the pin and the hole and then apply the solder. trying to make not to blind the video the camera with the light coming from my lamp it's a very reflective surface thinking of getting a microscope with a camera but they're a bit costly That's one side done. I'm using this trick too. Um, so I'm using the opposite connector to um, plug it into um, the pin rod. put it in the voice. And it's sturdy enough for soldering at least.
I went quite fast with so like nearly 400 pins to do. It actually went faster than I thought it would. So, that should be the last one. And just a little bit of quality check. See any solder bridges? No cold soldering. If you have cold solder, then it looks grey. Then it can be a bit porous. It'll, it'll look porous and a bit grey. Then you should actually go back and uh, add some more solder or remelt. And, then, and, and if it looks like there's a gap between the pin and the solder, then it also means that that's cold solder. So she one looks one should look at the solder like it's just flowing into the pin. So it's like part of the pin. So that is cool. We now have a completed breakout board. Got it so zoomed in, it's hard to show. <laughs> yep, that's that.